On day one, we took our raw fish skins and thawed them out in cold, salty water. We then cleaned our fish skins of the flesh and of the scales, being careful not to tear the scale pockets. We put those cleaned fish skins into cold, soapy water and washed them. Then we added them to our tea mixture, mixing for at least five minutes and at least five times that first day. This is our result after nearly 24 hours. You can see the color difference already. Something I didn't talk about in the first video is getting your next strengthened tea ready for the next day. You wanna make sure you save your old tea bags then each day you will progressively strengthen your tea by adding fresh bags to the pot. If you started with seven bags of tea for your first batch, what you're gonna to wanna to do is double that amount typically. So, but for the second day, I typically add 10 new fresh bags. And then the third day, I will add uh, 10 more bags plus the 17 old bags. You're going to keep doing this every day until your fish skins are tanned fully. I like to make sure I make my tea the night before switching out my skins because then the tea has a chance to cool totally. The next step is to transfer your fish skins into a new batch of tea. Your first batch of tea will likely look a bit cloudy and won't be as dark. That's exactly right. That means the tannins have been sucked into the fish skin. This is a good time to check your fish skin. Look it over, see if there's any spots that are missing extra scales, if there are any places that you need to finish cleaning, such as on the back, if there's any parts that are thicker or feel slimy, then you know that you might need to clean them a little bit more and scrape off any excess fat that you might have left. Here I'm scraping and feeling this slightly discolored place because this could be an indication that I left some fat on there. In this case it wasn't and it's just slightly discolored and so I can leave it be. On the third day, your fish skins will be even darker, although admittedly this is bad lighting here to show this. They will also be more evenly colored, which is a good sign that your tannins are taking up evenly. You can see the difference between the new batch of tea and the old batch of tea, which is on your right. I didn't quite boil enough water for my tea this last batch, so I'm going to use some of the old tea and add it to there to make sure there's enough for the fishkins to swim around properly and not touch each other. On day four, these fish skins are much darker and they feel a lot more like leather now. They're probably close to being tanned, but I like to give my fish skins a little bit longer, so I'm gonna go one more day. On day five, you can tell that the fish skins are basically done. They're floating at the surface, some of them, and the tea itself is now clear. It's not as opaque, which often is an indicator to me that they stopped taking up the tannins. Here you can see what happens when you happen to leave a scale behind. It also gets tanned. Next we're going to test the fish skin. So I find the thickest part of a fish skin and clip off a small piece. You're going to look at the middle of the clip part and see if the color is reached all the way through. It looks pretty good here, so we're gonna move on to the next step, which is the hot water test. You want to run the fish skin under hot water for at least 30 seconds to a minute. If it is not fully tanned, it will fall apart in your hands. Our piece survived and still looks good, so I'm going to call these skins done. The next step is to dry and soften your skins. I'm 
I'm gonna let most of the skins dry on our drying rack inside. This is an example of a Mahi Mahi skin that I dried and then I actually dyed and then I let dry again. And I still need to wet it down and soften it, but here's an example of a skin fully dried. A quick side note, before you soften your fish skin, you might consider adding some natural dye. This is a slightly more complicated process, but there are things like an iron bath, which will cause the skin to be dark gray or black, lac, cochineal, marigolds, onion skins, and so many more options. On to softening. For the skin that I want to work on right away, I'm going to roll it up in a towel and try to get out as much of the liquid I possibly can. So I will roll it and then I'm going to sort of roll it back and forth like I'm kneading bread almost or rolling out uh, dough. When most of the liquid is gone, I will start working it between my fingers, stretching it, pulling it this way. Basically, you're going to try to break the fibers as much as you can to help it soften. Here you can see how beautifully salmon skin stretches in those beautiful scale pockets. You do want to watch for any places that might be weak, such as that cut spot, and then be careful when you're stretching with those. Rolling your skin up sort of like a cigar and then rolling it between your hands is a great way to help soften the skin and you do that a lot uh, if you want to soften it. Softening takes quite some time, so this is something to do while you're listening to an audiobook or watching some YouTube videos or watching a show. Once your skin is almost completely dry, you're going to add some oil to it. My favorite is actually bacon grease. This is the last of our bacon grease from the pig that we butchered last year, so it's pretty precious to me and I save it as much as I can, but it, it works fantastic for softening fish skins. What you do wanna do is warm the oil up in your hands, although if you're using olive oil or something else, then you obviously don't need to help it become more liquid again. Once you fully oiled your skin, you're gonna do the same thing that you did when it was drying, which is to roll it up and to um, pull on it, to work on breaking those fibers, but to fully get that oil into the skin. This will likely take several sessions of oil. Here's another way of breaking your skin. You get a block of wood or a rock and you rub it against there. You don't want to rub the scale side because that will ruin your scale pockets. What do you do once you have a pile of softened skins? That's up to you and your imagination. I've made everything from decorations on moccasins to bags, a arm guard for my bow, and so many more things. Have a great time crafting and enjoy tanning.